This is the Best Friends Podcast, dedicated to sharing the people and programs that are ending the killing of cats and dogs in America's animal shelters. You'll hear from animal welfare leaders from across the movement who will share the innovative and collaborative work that are creating life-saving successes in communities of all sizes. Today is Friday, May 29th, and I'm John Dunn. All the drive and all the compassion and all the interest in making the world, like being a change maker is great. But if you don't have the skills of emotional intelligence on that journey, um, that journey can sometimes not end well. That is Mark Brackett. He's the director of the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence. Now, emotional intelligence, the dictionary definition, is the capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's emotions, and to handle interpersonal relationships judiciously and empathetically. As Mark just said, not having developed emotional intelligence skills can make everything we do harder, and in some cases, we fail in our goal to save lives. We can struggle as leaders, as staff members, when we interact with each other and the public. This is a passionate field to be in. Stephanie Hicks. She's certainly right about that. I want to be clear that this is not a cautionary tale per se, but Stephanie agreed to chat with me about the journey she and her organization have been on. And about three years ago, she joined the organization Care for Pets. The mission of it at that point was to build a bigger municipal shelter. A mission she didn't understand. To me, I've spent my life in social services. Why would we be building a bigger jail? Don't we want to try and keep the pets in our community um, with their owners? because there aren't really any support or retention efforts happening. Now, this is taking place in Winnebago County, Illinois. It's Rockford, about 90 minutes drive from Chicago. I became aware we were the second highest euthanasia shelter in Illinois um, behind Chicago. So they went to the county and said, hey, let's fix this. Now, for anyone who's tried to make that kind of change, you know it doesn't just generally happen on the first go. Not a priority to them. We have a high crime area, so that was part of it. And also was, you're asking us to change a lot, and how much is it going to cost us? And we don't want to do that. So they didn't want to spend money. Well, it costs you a lot more to house and euthanize than it does to, you know, you're willing to build a bigger shelter. It seems so logical. Yeah, cool logic, right? We'll take that. We'll call some meetings with all the parties, and it'll be productive and cordial. Initially, it was. When things don't happen as quickly as we're hoping, the situation starts to ramp up. There started to be more pressure on this needs to change. As things progressed, it got a little more testy. After a national organization, full transparency, it was Best Friends, offered to do an evaluation, initially they weren't interested. The county not wanting to take that opportunity is when it came more, um, what, what do I want to say, um, challenging, difficult, frustrating um, the swear words. I was upset. Yes, I was. I was angry. <laughs> Is that what you wanted to hear? I promise this was not an interrogation, but I'm like Oprah over here, man. I help people get in touch with their feelings. So this anger and frustration, this is where your emotional intelligence is put to the test. I was to a point that it was becoming difficult for me to manage that. Again, Stephanie agreed to do this. She knew what we were going to be talking about. So I asked her if she thought she was going to be able to step outside of herself and truly give an honest evaluation of what happened and her role. I'm very introspective and so I don't have a problem at all saying if I was a, a she said it was okay for me to use the swearing parts, but I have to bleep them because I don't want to get in trouble. This is passionate work. We do kind of let expletives fly from time to time. And humans in all of our imperfect glory can make things more difficult than they need to be. There is change going on politically at that time, so it was part of the problem. There were disagreements about what should happen going forward in terms of staffing changes. Um, and in advocacy towards that, if you want to talk about emotional intelligence in that regard, that didn't go the greatest. Although I believed in what I was saying, I also don't, I feel like personal lives should be left to the side. Lives are on the line. Animals are being killed today. Emotions do run high when you're trying to make this change happen, rightfully so. Personally, I've been there. You work your butt off and you know you're right, but you get ignored or brushed off. It drives you crazy. Stephanie and her organization worked on ordinances and policies that she knew would save lives, keeping animals out of the shelter, but the county resisted. So she reacted. There became a point where that was so upsetting that I did, I did say f it and um, we stopped servicing with them. We stopped our partnerships with them. We stopped, which didn't help the animals in the shelter, but there needed to be 
a line drawn. There isn't perfection in this, and I'm certainly not an expert like Mark Brackett, but I'm not sure there's really a right answer. This is advocacy. It can be dirty work and super emotionally charged, but you got to figure out how to increase and use that emotional intelligence. It is an understanding of your emotion so that you can be the most effective that you can be. Otherwise, there's no change because how do you interact with someone who's just coming across as angry. Now, Stephanie admits she has let her emotions get the better of her a few times, but she says by and large, she's managed to keep it together professionally. And the progress they've made in Winnebago County is impressive. Our animal services was killing here um, 250 cats a month, which is just insane for our, our size shelter. And that's something to be very angry about. And now we don't do that anymore. The euthanasia rate has improved 50% for cats, uh, almost 40% for dogs, and, and that's with a higher level of intake than what we've had. Going back to what you heard Mark Brackett say, without the skills of emotional intelligence, your journey can be harder. And Stephanie said she learned that balance is key. You desperately want to achieve your goal today, but you have to be careful about how you go about it. I just think it's important to keep like the longer long game goal in mind. This is a two-part episode, if you will, because next week you're going to hear more from the director of the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence, Mark Brackett. I think we have to become more aware of our emotions and how they're influencing our judgments and our decisions and just be radically honest with ourselves. You know, is this feeling helping me achieve my dream, my goal? Um, Is how I'm regulating my emotion helpful or unhelpful? Am I lying to myself? Or am I really using an an effective strategy? And I think that kind of self-inquiry is just really important and it never ends. Mark sat down with our producer, Amy Charlton. I know you're going to enjoy that interview. That's episode 16. Now, as life shifts back to some sense of normalcy, we too are going to shift. The podcast is going to move to one episode per week. We're going to publish that on Thursdays. And we will put out some bonus episodes from time to time. And we want to make sure you never miss an episode. So subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast. We have links to subscribe on all the major platforms on our website. That's bestfriends.org slash podcast, bestfriends.org slash podcast. I'd like to thank the producers of the podcast, Tawny Hammond, Amy Charlton, and Mark Peralta. Please take care of yourselves and each other and be safe. I'm John Dunn, and this is the Best Friends Podcast.